I think we're there. Something's going on with the internet. Let's hope it's okay. Yep, I think so. Just make sure that connection's okay. It's being a little bit off. Let's get my camera set up. So everything's straight and nobody's at a funny angle. I should just wait for the feed to crop up as well. Don't want to be upside down, Pepper. No, we don't want to be upside down. Okay, so I hope everyone can hear me okay. Hi, Donna. Yep, that should be okay. It's a very dull morning this morning. Myself comfy. Okay. Wait for a few more people to join us before we get going. Donna. It's a little bit different today. Um, we're not actually creating a card or a project as such. We, uh, we are just going to be looking at the watercolour techniques that I like to use and how they differ to different mediums. Hello Linda. Morning Jane. Good morning, Andrine. Oh, it's very wet and dull everywhere, isn't it? What? Yeah. <laughs> and also, I'd like to apologise that we haven't managed to get the last Technique Tuesday up onto YouTube yet for some unknown reason. Facebook is playing up and won't let us download it, so... Uh, We'll have to see what we can do. Hopefully it will be okay with uh, with today's Technique Tuesday, which is number 19. Um, as I say, it's going to be basic colouring with, uh, with watercolour mediums. Not your traditional watercolour in like a, like a pan or a tube. But... Um, I've stuck with what uh, crafters have uh, have access to more easily. Oh, it's a strange old platform, isn't it? Facebook. Great when it works. Okay, so as we can see, you've got different ones here. So these basically show the different mediums and techniques. Hello Jax! So I'm going to be using um, this stamp from the Floral Fancy stamp set which is gorgeous for doing this because it's nice and open you can add lots of bits and bobs to it. Oh hi Bev! Nice to have you here. Um, I'm using watercolour card I use the Pink Frog watercolour card, but uh, whichever is your favourite one to use, stick with that one. I'll be using Versifying Claire Nocturne to stamp with. Um, I've got my stamp platform where you could use a block. Good morning, Joan. I'm going to be using Ink Tense pencils, watercolour pencils. Ordinary coloured pencils for adding some details, um, watercolour pens and um, watercolour powders which are the brushos like we've used before. You will also need some uh, ordinary brushes, some water brushes, um, a little jar of water and a paint palette. I've got kitchen paper for mopping up. Good morning Sue. Morning Susan. Um, I've got a little acrylic block 
for mixing on as well and you also need some um, clear embossing powder and a heat tool for one of the effects okay so if we get started there are six different ones to look at as you can see from here so we'll look at the stamping part first just open up stamps this is the floral fancies which is one of my all-time favorites hi vanessa oh everyone's having problems this morning morning christine That's hi carol Stupid Facebook. So, and that was from the Spring Delights collection. I've got this one here. Beautiful stamp, this one. Love it. Morning, Carol. Okay. I've written on the backs of these as well, so we know uh, which ones are which, because I would forget. So we've got Intense watercolour, watercolour pens, and the brushes or powders, and also there's another technique which I've kind of named myself. Hi Julie! Morning Marianne! As like the, um, I couldn't think of what it was called, so I'm just going to call it colour filling, colour drop something like that so obviously you will be working on um, a, the size of project that you want to colour in yourself but just for demo purposes and to show you the differences all I've done is got some bits of card okay I've stamped a load of these out already Placed it roughly in the centre. There we go. So like we did last time. Just to make sure we get a good stamped image. You want multiple impressions, if you like, from the ink pad. But don't press hard. Just press very lightly. A little bit more in that middle because it's a block of colour. Lots of little light touches all over. Don't press that pad in too much, otherwise that's when you start getting it in between the lines and uh, causing blurring and over stamping. Place it down. A little bit of pressure all over. A bit more in the centre. You can always wiggle your your acrylic lid up or on your block and I'm going to let that soak in and obviously because this is watercolour card it's not a flat surface it's got those indentations good morning Elaine that's okay so we do need to give that time to settle in and that's fine that's that So when you're using any of what I would call your wet mediums, um, so like the, the brushos um, and the watercolour pens, I would say that you can go straight into this because Versafine Claire will work fine with that. Good morning, Wendy. Um, but if you're going to use the, the pencil straight into this, you uh, you will need to let it dry off a little bit otherwise it's just going to uh, smudge the ink there we go and if we find like in that center we've just got a little bit where it hasn't picked up and i can see from here that it's literally it's just the surface of the watercolor card so just a little bit more there, give that a wiggle. Press that down, give it a chance to sink in. And that's fine. There we go, let's give this a wipe. So 
I've got all of these prepared. For the um, colour filling technique, I found it best if you just uh, clear emboss the, uh, the black ink as well. It kind of holds everything in. It holds the, uh, the water and the colour in when you're actually doing it. But I'll show you that when we get to it. So you'll just go straight in and uh, clear heat emboss. Morning, Kim. There we go. It's ready. Pop that to one side. Let's move this out of the way. Don't need that anymore. That's it. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is ink tense pencils. So I've got one in already here. And no, no. I've, yeah, I very kindly borrowed these from Brian. <laughs> I just want to show you the difference between these and um, ordinary watercolour pencils, I suppose. Um, as the name suggests, they are intense with pigment. Hi, Annie. It's a gorgeous flower, isn't it, Donna? I love this stamp. I really do. Okay. So I usually start from the base of each petal and work outwards. So if we pick a colour, let's use green for this one. So this is the uh, the Inktense pencil for, you know, if you haven't seen them before. And I expect a lot of you have got these. And all I'm going to do, very roughly... Rather like we did with the alcohol markers, come in the edge of the bases of each petal and follow the stamens upwards as well. Don't have to be too precise about this at all. That's one of the lovely things about uh, watercolour painting. And I will use water brushes with this one I would use water brushes with what I would call the dry medium so your pencils um, otherwise if you use it with wet it will suck it up into the the barrel and then you get you get your water coloured which isn't uh, so nice so. Okay. what do you want brushes these are completely forgotten. The whiting is a Derwent. These ones. So just to get it started, just gonna give it a little wiggle. Good morning, Maxine. If you want to, if you want it a little bit wetter than it's coming out, I've just got a, a little uh, pot of water there. Start wiggling it through, and we want to drag the pigments out from the base you can see how much pigment is in these let me bring this down a bit good morning Jill, good morning, Jill. you can see what I'm doing okay let me wait for that to come up a little bit more maybe go and you can see what we're doing always helps you can see all the different variations of colors within this as well the yellow as well as the green we're literally just dragging it away from the center outwards if you find you're getting too much pigment on your brush. Give it a little dunk, little wipe on a cloth or a bit of kitchen towel. And come in again. We haven't got it too wet either. 
Okay. So that's that done. Just wipe that off on my hand. You can do it on the side if you don't want to uh, to get it on your skin. That's just what I do. So we've done the green. And then I'll come in with that nice red. I'll stick with the same colours in a minute. But, uh, makes sense. So again, like we've done before, just using the same techniques really. I'm kind of coming on the ends. Just roughly. And you can see with these that you don't really need a lot of the actual pencil down onto the card to get a good good amount of uh, colour coming out. So I'll just give that another white, make sure we got rid of the green. We'll do exactly the same. This time I'm going to pull it downwards so that it's the pigments are lighter. as they come into the middle and then blend that into there I'm going to give that a little wipe before I go on to the next one because we might have picked up some of that green just using little circular movements I like using the watercolours because it's a uh, Quite quick and easy. Okay, blend that in together. Give that another little wipe on the hand. Turn that round, come in on this one. Anyone that used intense social fire and dirty tea. Good work, princess. Wipe that colour down. You don't have to use these colours, of course. Go with whatever, yeah. whatever colours you like. These are the intense ones, Annie. From um, these are Derwent, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. 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 They're brilliant, aren't they? They are. Um, they are worth investing in. Okay, Derwent. One of the most expensive ones on the market for how long do I have then? Yeah, quite a long time. <laughs> Just going to pull that out. Get a little bit more water on there. This is a. Uh, just want to reiterate that this is my version of watercolouring. I love your colour. I love your version <laughs> of watercolouring. I'm very envious of people who can uh, yeah. do watercolour from scratch, if you like. I'm just, you know, basically blending things out from darkest to lightest. And a little blend in the middle there. Okay, so that is that one for now. We will need to leave this to dry off. A little bit before we finish it off. So this is the one. I'm just going to move these to one side. Got the ones as well which I did before. Just move that over there. We can carry on with that once it's dried off a little bit. So that's the ink tents, and you will really see a difference now. So we've got pack of 12 in fact you can see um, you can get these anywhere basically yeah, look out for sales because I got I paid them yes. about £14 for them Hobbycraft half price art sale ok we'll move on to the next one which is just ordinary watercolour pencil
pencils, the ones I'm using I got from um, Smith's, WH Smith's. They're a nice range of lots of different colours there. I don't know, I mean I've had these for, it must be about 10 years now. There's so many different uh, different sorts out there that you could use. Okay, so let's go in this time. We'll use a yellow for the centre. I think that we've got a nice a deep yellow. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. Yes, that's right, Angela. Definitely. Follow these up again. Exactly the same as we did before. You can already tell that I am pressing quite hard with this one it's a harder core if you like that your uh, pencil is uh, harder and firmer than the ink tense is quite soft so use the same pen again just give that a little wipe before we get going These are lovely if you want something delicate. It's got to be about 10 years. It's got to be. You can see here, hopefully, that uh, the colour is... Uh, reacting quite a bit differently really to the other ones okay we come in with some red again exactly the same as we did before precise at all. The water and the, the brush will do the hard work for you. Okay, so we'll do what we did before. That's okay Jax, don't worry. Um, I'm using watercolour card. This one is from Pink Frog. There are very many different uh, different sorts. So whichever one you like using. You can see already that this is much, much more of a subtle colour. So if I wanted something a bit more delicate, I would definitely use these. And the, mo the movement in the actual pigments is lovely. There's no problem with that at all. It's just as nice. You'll just get a less intense colour with it. But sometimes that's what we want. So again, just moving that away from where we put the, uh, the pencil down initially, moving it into the centre and then blending together slightly. And it's all with uh, little circular movements of the brush. And we can drag down. You can tell when it's getting a bit dry, so I'll just pop a little bit of water on there. That will help things move about. If 
you want a really fluid look with the uh, with the watercolor pencils add more water and that will give you a much more i guess traditional watercolor effect then pulling that down pulling that in like so so I bring the other one in just to have a quick comparison. Okay, you can see how different different that colour is on there, which is quite amazing. But um, I think that's the the brilliant thing with different different products. We get different effects with them for whatever we what we want to use them for. Okay, so again, I'm going to leave that to dry before we add the details in later. Apologies for the metal sound there. Pop over there. It's amazing, isn't it, the difference? And the third one. Okay. I mean, it keeps things interesting, doesn't it? Having the different different effects and different ways we can use things. Of course, you, I mean, you can you could do this with um, with distress inks and oxides as well. It would be very similar to the the method I'm going to use next, which is the watercolor pens. Um, I've got these from Stagler, which are quite cool. Again, you can get many variations, many uh, brands of watercolour brush pens. These are double-ended, which is also a good plus, if you like. Now, for this, you can go straight on with the pen to what you're colouring. Um, but I find that it does leave that first impression as well which is fine for some things but when you want something that's quite um, delicate and blended like on a flower um, I prefer to do it this way so I've got an acrylic block here next to me so going with these colours again with the yellow so we have got the thicker brush nib and then a fine nib so I'm going to use the brush one and I'm just going to go over let me flip it on here and then you can see it go right over the acrylic block with the colour and then we're going to pick it up with the brush from there And I'm going to use a brush, a brush brush for this one. So these are just my old brushes I've had for a long time, which you can tell. <laughs> and we're going to come in. I'm going to directly pick it up from here. And this will give us a much softer effect than if we went straight onto the uh, the card with the pen. Pick some more up. I have found that when you go straight in with the, the pen, like I said, it is quite quite harsh. Um, it's difficult to blend it. A little bit more water. I'll show you on the edge here. That'd be better. So we've got this really got a line here. We can blend it out, but I 
you can still see you've got the the initial line there which i'm not all that keen on so that's why i prefer to just pop it down onto the block first and then pick it up and put it on there so just give that a wipe if you wanted to you could splodge this down onto a uh, a bit of card to pick up the remaining watercolour ink there. You're welcome, Vanessa. And we'll come in with our other colour, the red. Again, from the thick nib, come in, go over. Yes, you can do this with them. Um, oxides and ordinary distress inks yes the the brush is wet so i've dunked it in water come over wiped it all over just to, to mix it up a bit you just splodge splodge the ink pad down onto here first and then you can pick it up with your brush Come in here first. I'll get to about there. I just go into the water again. Go here and start blending. probably see that this is much more because it's it's a it's liquid in the first place so this is quite uh, quite a fluid technique in some ways you can be a little bit more precise with it most of the colour down at the top and then work it down just like we did before pick up a little bit more I'm not using um, expensive brushes or anything like that at all these are just ordinary run of the mill brushes you have favourites and you've got your own set by all means use what you've got and starting at the edge coming in and you can tell that's getting a little bit dry so I just pop it back in the water turn back in A little bit darker, a little bit more colour on the brush. There we go, so that's that one. Get that a clean and a wipe off. And again, we're going to leave that to dry until we're ready to, uh, to add our details. Let's put this to one side. Okay, so the next one we've got is brushos. Uh oh. <laughs> so I know um, we've used brushos before in our Technique Tuesdays, which are quite exciting. Let's get everything set up. So I've got this little palette. This came with another another kit of uh, something or other. But, um, you can pick these up really easily. It's just um, it's it's got the wells in there which you need, not a flat palette because we're we're going to be mixing the powders with water. Otherwise, they'll just they'll go everywhere. So if we do uh, do a bit of that mixing first, okay. So I've got the three colours I'm going to be using. This is the uh, the brushos you can use. 
whatever brand you like. You've got, you've got some of these in the set of paints, aren't you? Yeah, no, I, I mean, the first time I tried them, it was direct to the card, and I thought, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought, well, if I can do it with, uh, with distress inks and pads and things and put it on a on a block or a mat or something first we'll do that it does a little does go a long way it's, it, it is intense it's basically powdered powdered watercolor pigment so so i put a little bit in here this is lemon i'm just gonna add a bit of water in there and then with another brush, we're going to give this, use that one, a good stir. Give that a good mix. Bring that up a little bit so you can see. I know we uh, touched on these before, but uh, it's yeah. raining. What's the weather like for everybody else? Well, I never. Is it as miserable as here? <laughs> yeah, give that a good mix until you've seen all the all the powder dissolve. You've got no clumps. These are such lovely, bright, bright colours. Move this around a bit, I'm going for the next one. And the next colour I'm using is Scarlet, if you've got them. So I'd use a, just use a little flat brush just to pick some up. And a little bit in there. Okay. A bit of water. Oh, it's uh, very definitely it's all totally, tumble. It's totally peeing it down here, Vanessa. <laughs> so you're going to mix that up again. You want to make sure you've got them mixed well. You think we're really used to water living in a desert living in there are lots of different uh, different brands of powdered pigments so if you haven't got brushes uh, there are certainly lots of other ones you can get a Lindy's gang and I'm going to finish with a little bit of lime green. Hi Jill. Oh springtime. That's not fair. <laughs> Oops. Can Sorry about that. Some heat here, please. Just not the camera. That's not good. Yeah, it's not what you like. Sort the camera out where I knocked it. Not, we're not on our own. There we go. That's wow. it. Really clumsy hands. That's a lovely close up, Pippa. <laughs> okay. Get the green mixed. You could see that uh, the colour is very different to the powder you first put in this one. <laughs> Mixed. There we go. Fit me English weather today. <laughs> okay. So we will be using basically the same techniques again. It's just um, I don't know what you call it really. Application, I guess, is slightly different, if you like. Yeah, Marion's got the right idea. 
Okay. This is true. <laughs> Very true. So, this time we can use, I think we use the yellow, we'll do the green on the next one that I'm going to do. So, I'm going to come in again. Straight away and get everything in shot with the yellow. <laughs> you're in um, you're in France now, aren't you, Andy? Where you were originally from uh, the south of England. Oh, she is southern. Loosely add in the colour to the card. I'll do it a little bit more in there at the centre just to make it uh, the colour a bit more intense, is if Annie, you like. Is Annie's husband saying, I sound like Annie? <laughs> is it me or Brian? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, ah. you, you yes, that is posh. <laughs> you're posh than me, and I am from Manchester, so. Well, I'm not, am I? <laughs> half and half. Okay. And then we're going to come in with the scarlet. As we're adding this in, quite wet, I guess. You will see these colours mix together. Don't worry if you go outside the lines, that's all part of the watercolour charm. In fact, I quite like that sometimes. Just almost dribble this on if you like. Be quite loose with it. Get more of an um, arty effect this way. Oh, wow. Well. So you can get a much looser effect using these. Oh. You live in real Yorkshire, Wendy. Real Yorkshire. <laughs> That's fine. You can come in a little bit more if you like. Put in some extra, extra colour. That's it. We'll, uh, we'll leave this to dry. We might need to get the heat gun on this one. As we've gone in straight with the wet. You definitely do get more of a traditional uh, watercolour effect with this one. Okay. Let's move this carefully so we don't dribble it everywhere. We want to keep the brush hose out for the next one we're doing, which is the one I like to call colour filling. 
this is the one that I've clear heat embossed. Um, it will give you a slight area like defense around the edges to keep some of the, that water in. Um, actually, I'm going to need some clean water, which my lovely assistant will yep. change for me. I'm just talking, I'm chatting so up the ladies like I do. <laughs> The, the great thing about these these different ways of using basically what is the same thing watercolor it's watercolor pigment just in just in different um, just in different forms pencils pens powders liquids um, I would say thank you that uh, the liquid brushes are possibly more like your traditional watercolors either from a tube or a pan um, so as I say yeah so now what we're going to do is we're still going to use the brush -os. this time we're going to go straight in with water and we're going to paint in with water first just where we want that first little bit of colour to go I'm going to use some of the green I've got quite a fine brush and I'm just going to drop this in here and as you can see the water will suck that up we want to add a bit more in go again and the water will pull that away mm -hmm. I'll show you that again well, I think you have them, yeah? about three different colour mediums <laughs> I want them all <coughs> just come in add in the water just where those little stamen are you can see that's already picking it up from the colour we've just put down Come back in, just drop it there, and that will automatically fill for us the rest of it. I'm very careful how we turn that. I have to admit, this was something I'd seen on Pinterest. Um, it was just a picture, it wasn't a video or anything, so I thought, oh, I'll have a go at that. And I kind of made it up as I go along. <laughs> Just with the drop in the, it's probably got a proper name somewhere, but colour drop or colour fill. Nice amount of water here. Again, going to pick up the green. Pop that in. <laughs> Move this away. It is, it's just like, uh, <laughs> just like magic. <laughs> Again, a lot of water on the brush. It's kind of out of your control, if you like. So it, uh, yeah, but it, it takes out the hard work of blending, doesn't it? Yeah. It's more organic, I guess, yes. is the right word to use. Yeah. something different which I think is what we all want really something different to do with our stamps and again come in with the green there we go I know what everyone will be doing though <laughs> so again we would need to leave this to uh, to completely dry before we go on to the um, the red fill from the other end otherwise you'll just end up with one brown uh, brown soggy mess <laughs> is it yes it is it is I was completely forgotten it is wet in wet that's it thank you thank you Angela <laughs> 
<laughs> You've got what? to live a long time before and become an old lady. I'm already an old lady. <laughs> okay, so I've got one that I did before and it's dried like so. There we go. So, basically the same. This time we're going to fill... All the air around here. Come in with the red. So I might need a little bit of encouragement. That will soon go together. There we go. old bones oh. <laughs> but I know what they mean <laughs> honestly my memory is terrible okay oh lovely Posh Annie in, in France. France. <laughs> Have a lovely day. Again, add this in. This is reminding me of watermelon. in here. Angela Aspica, she tell you I'm a true northerner. <laughs> Such a small country, it's amazing the diversity we've we've got. This is amazing. Something to be proud of. Just keep dropping the colour in until you're happy with where it is. I quite like the effect I'm getting with the with this one. Being quite patchy. I think now you can see why uh, why I clear heat emboss the ink. Those little puddles of water where they should be. This is really fun. This is quite addictive, this technique. <laughs> yes, Sandra, I did try that first um, and it did sink in a little bit too quickly. Um, that's why I'm doing each one separately. Um, then again, I'm quite a slow worker, so I mean, you could probably, I mean, especially once you get the hang of, of what you're doing, you could probably do them all in one go. Yeah, it's not like painting, but it's in ceramics sometimes. Yes. Like a glaze. Of course, when it dries, you lose the glaze, but I guess if you wanted mm -hmm. to keep that... Uh, ceramic effect you could put glossy accents on there we go so I think we'll leave that at that a little wipe off there we go <laughs> it does create a lovely lovely effect that one there we go, let's move these to one side. Okay. Putting my hand or arm in them or something silly. There we go. So let's check on our other ones to see how they're getting on so we can add the details. 
That is dry, but I'm just going to give it a little waft, just in case. Especially as we're going back over with pencil. If you go over uh, onto damp with a pencil, it just drags and leaves a lasty little mark with it. some ordinary call ordinary so non watercolor pencils now to fill in the details let's flatten that out a little bit so i've actually got the pencils um the faber castell ones which you can use that way there we go which you can use on black card and paper um i really like these for working on on ordinary card any color card really because they've got a nice a nice deep color to them and i've got my bestest favorite sharpener ready because we want nice crisp sharp lines with what we're doing here so what we can do just come in with this one I think we'll go with the green, quite sharp already, but let's just give it another little twist. Make sure the end's okay. So we're just going to follow these lines up, just more or less like we did before. drawn lines just add in these little details that's all right Maxine have a good day and we'll come in with a little bit of red as well I think those veins that are on the petals a little bit of shape now let's just give that a little sharpen it does doesn't it wendy i was trying to remember what uh, what it reminded me of and we're gonna come back in and fill the double outline here So we can now turn these flowers into Christmas flowers, if you like. Just going to fill these in. Define them, give them a nice edge. Don't have to, of course. And I rotate my pencil as well as I'm going around. Just to keep the, the actual nib part of it quite clear. You can add some depth if you want to on the ends. Oh, I would have loved to have gone to art college. Um, the closest I got, I studied photography, which was an art-based course. Um, 
it was more arty than technical photography so i guess um that you know that that goes goes towards it but no i would have actually loved to have properly studied art but most of it's it's trial and error isn't it just to have a sit and try try different things out i think that's the that's the best way to to do things at the end of the day it's a bit of card and always uh practice on something you know a bit more easier to work with first maybe some copy paper or um you know whatever sort of, you know cheap card or whatever first just to try out different techniques okay so that's the ink tense one Let me move this to one side Now we're going to do the same with the ordinary pencil, which is the one which is uh, slightly more subtle. Again, I'm just going to give it a quick blast just in case there's any dampness still there. Mm. Self-taught artist, for me, takes all the rules. True. Uh, a taught artist, you're scared of something I'm always, always, right from a little tot, have knocked about with crayons and pencils and colouring in and bits and bobs, and I think most of us crafters are the same, aren't we? Okay, so this time... We'll go straight in with the red. Just going to give that another sharpen. We're going to do exactly the same. Going a little bit lighter. All over this round. a little bit of the yellow it's uh it's just you know what you're comfortable with I mean, there are some some uh, arty things and that that i would uh i wouldn't go near because they would frighten me so Uh, it's being brave isn't it and trying something yeah. that's uh, out of your comfort zone we'll come back in again just gonna make the outline on these again i think it finishes in quite nicely kind of looks like it's uh, where we make them darker it makes them look like the petals curved over is also really really quite relaxing to do i have a lovely time making a load of these flowers <laughs> yeah there's hope for you linda that's what i'm giving you <laughs> again just a little shading just to bring them out very very lightly with the pencil it's a great way of uh, with any any coloring whatever medium you're using just to finish it off with a little bit of pencil 
just lightly over the top. Hardly pressing down, you can see the difference that makes. Okay, so we have that one. Move that to one side. We'll have a good look at them all when we're finished. Then we've got our pen. Now what you can do with this one, instead of using the pencils, we do the same as we did before. We can pop a little bit down on our acrylic lock, but this time go in with a very fine brush. We'll just dip that in some water, pick that up, and do the same thing here. Get a much more subtle effect this way. Then dab it in the water, pick some more of that up. And this is why I've done it like this today, trying a different method, so you can then see which ones you like and which you'd like to try. Of course, the deeper the colour, just pick up more from, from the surface you're using. The water I've always wanted to try oils but uh, it's one of the things that frightens me <laughs> however much I've watched Bob Ross yeah. oh, come on how many, how many Bob Ross tutorials have you watched <laughs> there we go so you get a much more painterly effect with this one and just the same as before we can still go in and go around the edges if it's what you would like to do Yep, yeah, that's right, Wendy. That's exactly it. Yeah. You're not going to know unless you uh, try unless you try. And it is just uh, just paper at the end of the day, which can be recycled. So that's no problem. Oh, that's it. I think we'll leave it at that. Hi Vivian. There we go. So I don't think you can see it. There we go. Okay, let's move that one to one side. Also, what you could do is uh, you could use a little bit of um, fine liner just to add some detail in the the little stamens as well if you wanted to. Let's mop that up from the acrylic block. Okay, now we've got the brush out. So again, I would use fine brush. Let's give that a clean. Hi Lynn! So I'm going to go into the red brusho liquid. Just 
Hold on, color. So this will be a, a subtle effect. If you want the deeper effect, use the pencils again. Could let it dry and then go over again if you wanted to to make it deeper. I hope, yeah, I've got way too many. <laughs> That's fine, Vivian. Yeah, I love this flower too. It's lovely, isn't it? It's such a lovely uh, flower to colour. Right, so you can add in some extra around the sides. Just intensify that a little bit. If you want to, you can flood some areas, bring them out. other one is still drying I have got this one which I did before let's bring in the one that's uh, still drying I don't really want to go in with the heat tool because it will um, pull the colors um, into areas that I might not want them or it would it would um the the heat and the um, air from the heat tool would, would push the push the colours into places we, we might not want them to go. So I'd much rather just leave that as it is and let it dry naturally. So we have this one. So if I show you the difference, we're going with the pencils on this one. So let's get that red one back. Another little sharpen. soft touch to what we've done and we can come in in between those lines if you want to don't have to Fine using the, the pencil on top of the embossing. It's just alcohol markers that go a little bit odd when you put them over the top of, of embossing. Not putting much down at all. Just a little bit to finish off. There we go. So that is that basically that over there let's bring the camera back up and then i can bring all these in that's it where's it coming up do, 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 do. wait for the feed up enough yep that's it there we go okay if 
I'll show you the different ones. So we're back to one inside. So this is the one we've just done. This, this is the ink tents. I'll have to write on everything because I would forget. Some ink tents here. I've got some other ones I did just in plain colours as well, just to show the difference. So those are all done with the ink tense pencils different variations like those so yeah it's really interesting to do see the different uh, different combinations we can get i think move those of that away and then we've got our watercolor here and then we've got a plain one as well, just in the one colour. There we go. We're going to run out of room, aren't we? <laughs> so let's move these to one side and bring the next lot on. I had to get a little bit carried away doing flowers, but it was so nice. It was just so lovely sitting and colouring. It was lovely. And we got the brush out. Sorry, no, not the brushes, the watercolour pen, not what I'm talking about. We've got those there. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Vanessa, the trusty assistant. <laughs> I like to please Vanessa. My beautiful assistant. Okay. Then we have the brushos. All the brusho ones, all looking different. Oh, you just got to cut them all out now, <laughs> or just leave them as they are. You could quite easily just mat and layer these and pop them on a small card, and you're done. <laughs> a sentiment, there you go. <laughs> but as I say, this will apply to anything you're coloring in. It just made it just made life a little bit easier to to do them as a single. So we could look at the various different options and mediums and techniques and things. And then we had the uh, wet on wet, as I now call it. I've got to remember wet on wet. Yeah. So put that there. I did one which was just, I did the whole petal and then added the colour on it, which is that one there. And then that one that we've got drying. Pop that there. Bring this up slightly. Thank you. There you go. That's it. So, yeah. That's all our lovely little flowers. So, thank you so much for all your lovely comments today. And, uh, you know, it helps. It helps, you know, with, uh, with me and uh, with everyone else. It encourages and supports everybody. Oh, thank you, Julie. That's fine. I know you're very busy. And um, as you'll have seen, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., so that's Wednesday the 15th at 9 a.m., Julie will be launching her new collection. Do not miss. It is gorgeous. Um, there's, there's something in there, I think, for, for everybody lots of different bits so tune in tomorrow 9am on here on the julie hickey designs facebook page wednesday the 15th 9am um and the next technique tuesday number 20 good grief um we'll be doing some no line coloring using uh watercolor pencils again to follow on from this but with the no line ink um so thank you ever so much for your company that's been really enjoyable can't wait to see what you all create with your different watercolors um i expect i'll see you tomorrow with julie and definitely in a fortnight thank you bye 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 <laughs>